Assalamu alaikum. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank PPMA uh, for giving me the opportunity to uh, moderate this uh, panel of luminaries in the pharmaceutical industry and talk about something which is very, very relevant, and that is uh, Pharma 3.0. The format of the, the panel discussion is that uh, uh, I will give two to three minutes to each panelist to introduce themselves and then give their take on uh, this uh, topic which we are discussing today. And then we will have some questions and obviously we'll take questions from the audience as well, inshallah. And at the end, I will uh, request our respected chair, Niazi Saab, to summarize and conclude the session. So to begin, uh, I have a short presentation and people who know me know that uh, I'm not really into giving short presentations, but I'm going to try, inshallah. So <clears throat> this is uh, what we mean by Pharma 3.0. And why I'm using this slide is just, set, just to set the tone so that we can have a meaningful conversation and we can have relevant questions from the audience as well. And if you look at this concept of Pharma 3.0, you will see that it's completely different from what we have been uh, used to look at pharma. It's a, it's a different way of looking at pharma entirely. It talks about uh, things like focusing on prevention uh, and not just simply curing uh, or treating. It talks about innovation and making use of new technologies and that's the theme of the conference. Social media. It also talks about and urges us to redefine our customer as opposed to you know, working with just physicians, we need to work with more customers. Uh, farming collisions and non-traditional partnerships, as I mentioned. And the most important is talking about outcomes. And Mossadegh Saab and other speakers have already uh, mentioned this term, which is health outcomes. Next, please. Okay, I'll do it myself. So this is uh, how the transition looks like from the conventional, the, the earliest model of uh, Pharma 1.0 and the tr transition to 3.0, which is completely about health outcomes and not just simply uh, developing or selling pills. I, I love this slide because it, it actually tells us about the, the partnerships and collaborations of the pharma industry with uh, IT companies and other organizations. So this is the era of collaboration. And I was so happy when uh, Aga Khan University Hospital, which is the best and the most respected hospital, reached out and is willing to work with the industry on data and digital health. And that was uh, a beginning of something revolutionary, inshallah, in Pakistan. Uh, this is the first time healthcare accepted that patients are at the center. So this report by the Institute of Medicine in the US uh, talks about patient-centeredness as a fundamental of healthcare. And if you look at Pharma 3.0, you will see that it sits on patient-centeredness, technology, innovation, collaborations, and creating value for these patients at the end of the day. So we all know that uh, patients, we all are e-patients today. We have access to information. Uh, there's a plethora of information. We have this box in our you know, pockets, and we can just look up pretty much anything we want, even while we are in a physician's uh, clinic having a consultation. Uh, the IMS, the name has changed now, also talked about this growing value of digital health in the pharmaceutical industry and space. And this is what we want to talk about today uh, with our panels. Uh, uh, so if you look at, uh, there was a survey which I uh, shared yesterday. By the way, we had a very wonderful, meaningful uh, session on digital health. Uh, yesterday, we had more than 100 participants from the industry. Obviously, Daniel was with us and we had two invited speakers. And uh, we had a long discussion how Pakistani pharmaceutical industry can have this transition uh, into this digital health scenario, inshallah. So if you look at the numbers, 84% uh, of study participants consider it crucial to have a digital health strategy for every pharma company. They agree that it will generate new business. They also agree, most of them, 
the new value proposition is going to be created through digital and the competitive advantage or the uh, edge. So we all know this visionary uh, and we know that uh, with the iPhone, we are all using iPhone, iPads and, and computers. He had this vision and he could envisage at his time that the biggest revolution uh, is going to be at the intersection of health, biology and information technology. So this is what the, the current scenario looks like. I just summarized you know, the digital health 3.0 in one uh, slide because uh, we don't have so much time today. But if you look at this, this is all happening today. This is not the future. This is actually the past. We've been doing half of the things for the last 10 years. Are we shifting or migrating towards all of these, if not, you know, some? So we live in the era of Uberization of healthcare. And the Uberization of healthcare is possible because of the internet and the connected devices. And if you look here, this is a game changer. You can actually be connected with your physician, with your hospital, with your providers 24 seven. Utilizing these connected devices with the internet, with the power of the mobile. This is happening today. And this is so, so unique. And this is how you create uh, outcomes and create value in the healthcare chain. So I selected one area of digital health, and that's uh, artificial intelligence. And I'm, and I'm sure that we are all cognizant of the power we actually use artificial intelligence uh, throughout our daily lives. And this slide actually speaks a lot. It speaks that all the major, if not uh, most, if not all, of the major IT companies are actually investing in artificial intelligence and healthcare. So this is the CEO of Google, Mr. Sundra, and he was speaking in front of the whole world. And the first thing he mentions and I repeat, the first thing he mentions in his speech was healthcare. And the second thing he mentions was artificial intelligence. And then he goes and tells us about this new solution which Google has created, where they can actually predict. By just looking at the eye, they can predict the chances of ha patient having any kind of a heart attack, they can actually tell us if the patient is a male or a female, uh, does he or she has uh, hypertension, and so on and so forth. Artificial intelligence is something which we need to really, you know, follow. So I'm sure that, you know, you all have heard that there are solutions out there through which we can actually have better diagnoses on radiology, because radiology is probably uh, an easier uh, you know, area for, for artificial intelligence. And then there's a debate, are radiologists going to be redundant? And we can have a, a discussion. I'm not in favor of that, but we had this argument yesterday. So you can actually, there are solutions out there, you can just go on the internet and you can utilize AI solutions for your uh, radiology images. And this slide tells you that pharmaceutical companies are already working with companies in the world, and they're already working in the AI space. Uh, we would want Pakistani pharma companies also to follow suit. So probably artificial intelligence will move from intelligence to actually imagination. And just think about it. It may be scary, but it's also very exciting. And then the, you know, the combination of AI with AR or VR. This is brilliant. We use this for training of physicians. We use this for training of medical students. When I was a medical student, it was a completely different scenario. Today, medical students study in a, an entirely different manner. Look at this collaboration. I love this collaboration. Not one, but few pharmaceutical companies working together for the benefit of the patient, for creating healthier outcomes. They're not shy in collaborating. 
And this, this is a very, you can Google this. Uh, this uh, was in the US, uh, very famous, and we heard about this. So are we here? First digital pill. And we asked this question yesterday. <clears throat> Fortunately, yes, we are. And this is the first digital pill. And I know uh, Hanif Saab is, you know, smiling. Uh, this is the pill which has the sensor, and it's FDA approved, and I'm sure many will follow. So this is where we are. This is a perfect example of technology, patient centricity, keeping the patient in mind, keeping him or her connected through different devices or technology, and creating value in healthcare. Thank you very much. So we should start our discussion now, and I will move to my first panelist, and uh, I will uh, repeat. We will give two to three minutes to each panelist. I would request you to introduce yourself and then give your take on digital health and the Pharma 3.0 concept and how patient centricity and technology and creating value sit together. So I would request Harun Saab, introduce yourself and then you know, give your take. Thank you, Dr. Zaki. Uh, my name is Harun Qasim. Uh, I'm the managing director of Amiibo. Uh, I'll have a very brief uh, point on what Dr. Zaki said. I think the last 50 years undoubtedly has overshadowed 40,000 years of human history when it comes to a disruption. And I take the liberty in front of uh, the Pradhanyadi Saab, who is uh, writes on Ghalib, and I quote uh, the famous poet Ghalib, Hai kaha tamanna ka dusra kadam ya rab, humne dashte imkaan ko ek naqshe pa paaya. Where will the next step of desire be, O Lord? I found, I found the whole desert of possibility to be just one footprint. So my take on this the digital is, is immense. And I leave it here with what Ghalib said 50 years ago. And uh, we need to see how things unfold and how things get disrupted. So thank you, and we can carry on with the discussion. Yeah. Why don't? Okay. So we move to uh, Mr. Ghulam, if you can please. My name is Javed, managing director of uh, Martin Doll Limited. Uh, we, uh, what I'm going to talk about is the overall digital transformation in the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, if you look at the digital transformation, uh, you have different uh, digital technologies available, such as uh, artificial intelligence, we're talking about it. We're talking about the big data, analytics, we're talking about Internet of Things, IoTs, uh, we talk about cloud processing. Now, these different technologies uh, we cannot implement in the pharmaceutical industry in isolation. We need to have a proper uh, a digital ecosystem to cover the various functions of pharmaceuticals, starting from manufacturing till the medicines and pills are consumed by the patients. Now, how these technologies can be beneficial or can be implemented in the, in the pharmaceutical field? So I'll go step by step. I'll not take a lot of time, but let's say the first area, which is not very uh, relevant to the Pakistan pharma industry, but it is related to the new drug discovery. So if you're using artificial intelligence, we can have a better uh, clinical trial protocols, we can have a better machine learning methods instead, instead of a traditional methods to, uh, for the proper clinical trial, which can definitely reduce the cost of the new uh, uh, drug discovery. As uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Musaddiq was telling us, is $2.6 billion a cost of new uh, drug discovery. So if we're going to implement a machine learning methods, definitely the overall cost can be reduced. And second is that uh, uh, the turnaround time can be quick. Now the second area is, uh, is related to regulatory affairs. You know, from Pakistan, uh, we are trying to export to several markets. Now, if you go to the uh, developed markets of the world, and not only developed markets, I will take a semi-regulated markets of the world, including Malaysia, where 
you don't have to submit a manual dossiers to the drug regulatory authority. There is a system, there is a checklist which has been tried by according to the ICH guidelines and you have to upload all your documents in the system. And if your dossier is not complete, system will not accept it. And if your dossier is complete, then there is a timeline defined in the system and every evaluator has to follow that timeline in the regulatory body. So this is the way uh, the pharmaceutical products are getting registered and evaluated by different regulatory bodies using the systems and technologies. Now, now the third step is that uh, if you see serialization, serialization is one of the most important area, especially in Pakistan where you can control counterfeit uh, because you can track, you can trace your product starting from the raw material, import, procurement, packing material, to the final product when it is given to the consumer. So this way you can ensure uh, definitely a genuine product reaching uh, the patient. And second is that you ensure the quality of the product. Now the fourth area is more towards the commercial nature, which is uh, sales and marketing. And I think in this particular field, Pakistan is doing good. We can see uh, several companies having CRM systems in their, uh, in their companies and we are there utilizing very uh, efficiently and very effectively. But our CRM is mainly related to and concerned to the doctors. So we need to take the next step, that getting into patients now. We should not be restricting ourselves only to the, to the doctor's level, but we should have a direct interaction with the patients using CRM because doc, uh, patients is our customer, not only the doctors. Now, uh, moving forward, and the final one is related to supply chain and manufacturing. Because, you know, you are dealing with multiple vendors here. You have so many raw material suppliers, packaging material suppliers. In the pharmaceutical fa formulation, you are using excipients. And when you are exporting your products, you have a different packaging material requirement for different markets. And all these things are not really possible if you don't have a proper systems in the company. Now, uh, this, this we are talking about uh, Industrial Revolution 4.0. So these things have to be implemented to ensure that products are delivered on time and products the right quality and at the right place. So these are the few areas where I think that digital technologies can play a key role in the pharmaceutical. And if you guys have any questions, uh, please let me know. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> uh, we will move to our next panelist, uh, Ms. Nusrat. And again, please introduce yourself and then you can give us your take on 3.0 and the digital health revolution. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Zaki. Uh, my name is Nusrat Munshi, and uh, I am the CEO of AGP Limited, which is a part of the OBS group. Uh, I belong to the Generation X, and my Generation X, along with the baby boomers, uh, will soon be overtaken by the millennials. Why I want to talk, I think the why of why we should be listening to this is extremely important. So who are these millennials? Millennials are those who were born between the years 1980 and 1995, okay? So basically, the, these have been popularly called the drive-through generation. These are people who want instant gratification, instant solutions, and focused, focused solutions. So, uh, you know, many of the stakeholders in the healthcare industry, and particularly the pharmaceutical industry, are yet to acknowledge the importance of this large demographics. Very soon, by the year 2023, this will be the largest demographic in this $1 trillion market. So if we don't start adapting to the ways that this new millennial thinks, we will soon be talking to, to an audience which does not exist. I wondered to myself that why is that? Like, you know, particularly in, like, you know, I was talking to many people yesterday, and particularly the pa Pakistani pharmaceutical industry, as why is it that we are struggling? I think many of the industry leaders, 
we belong to either the baby boomers or the generation X. And let's face it, we've had a pretty good spell. So I think it's, it's understandable that why we are struggling to make this paradigm shift. So I just want to leave you with, uh, with an example. Uh, do you remember Blackberry? Uh, how many people owned a Blackberry between the years 20, 2001 and 2010? Show of hands. Plenty of hands. Uh, any of you own it now? No hands. Okay, so in a span of just a decade, we're not talking too long ago, so in a span of just a decade, uh, Apple and the Androids have completely taken over the market. So basically, as uh, Senator Mothatik was talking about it, the change is going to happen. Uh, Either you can be a part of the change and embrace that change, or someone else will come forward and replace you. So that's my take on it. Thank you. So how many millennials do we have in the audience? Oh, I'm not raising my hand. I'm just asking. <coughs> how many millennials do we have in the audience? Really? <laughs> wow. Okay, great. Okay, thanks. Um, so let's move to our, our next panelist. And uh, Tawfir Saab, obviously I would again request you to, you know, introduce yourself in yeah. detail. You know, people want to know our speakers. Okay. My name is Tawfir Ulhak and I'm Managing Director from Sante Pharmaceutical. And Sante Pharmaceutical is basically a specialty pharmaceutical company and uh, our core area is ophthalmology, dermatology, and ENT. Pharma 3, I think, is the name of collaboration between different stakeholders in healthcare sector. It is different from Pharma 1, which was basically in that uh, part of Pharma 1, companies used to, you know, manufacture products and introduce blockbusters. And it is again different from Pharma 2. In that era, there was severe competition and companies were, you know, manufacturing products, <coughs> they were developing products and they were marketing brands, but the companies were, you know, working in isolation. There was a little effort in terms of, you know, collaboration and providing, uh, you know, uh, ably the healthcare uh, solutions. So in Pharma 3, I think this is a great change in which companies and you know the stakeholders have to collaborate, they have to become partners and pharmaceutical companies have to come close to each other, IT companies, they have come closer to you know medical technology companies, uh, healthcare institutions and uh, regulators, regulatory bodies like DRAP and patients and also the healthcare providers, I mean all the physicians and medical community. Now because this is not the time just to, you know, make product available, this is time to, you know, give healthcare solutions. And I think Pharma3 will lead towards digitalization and it will be more towards collaborative approach to serve the community by providing, uh, you know, best possible and high quality medication. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we are uh, grateful that uh, Hamid Raza Saab has joined us. Uh, and uh, I would like him to introduce you know, Thank you, himself. sir, for giving me an opportunity to speak on this occasion. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum to all the participants. I am Hamid Raza. I am Chief Executive of uh, Neutropharma Private Limited. And uh, today's topic is uh, very unique and current to all the industry needs and demands. 
digitalization or the transformation of the industry or as a whole I see the society into the digital age is the need of the hour. If we can see and we have seen in the last uh, couple of decades the lot of industries they have converged themselves into a small apps. Today if we see uh, the biggest company who's on the social media who don't have their single upload is the most popular web page in the world. The company who's selling the most hotel rooms don't own a single room of the hotel. The company who's selling like the most uh, car rides, they don't own a single car. So what is this? It is this, the digitalization of the different industries keeping in need of the consumer. Right now, if we see in the pharmaceutical industry, our way of doing the business just 10 years before and right now, how much different and how much digitalization is incorporated already. So the future of every industry is either an app or something related to the digitalization or mobile. If you see your lab, you need a software to run your lab effectively. If you see your production, you need a management or a building management system to run effectively your organization. If you see a product development capacity, you need a software. Even to run an HPLC, you need a software that is compliant to the current digital needs. So it is already there. What is required is our adaptation and how fast Yes, uh, Musaddiq Saab Nika, with you or without you, it's already happening. You know, in marketing, it's already there. So what we are required to do to expand our vision uh, for the future requirement and realizing that even we have to go home, we use Google Maps. So whatever, a consumer is looking for, or over direct customer, a doctor is looking for, he look first of all the options available, and it's our responsibility to give them more comfort by organizing the data and give them retrievable information and in the best possible time for the benefit of the patient. Thank you. Thank you very much. We move to the, the next uh, panelist and I'm glad that we have someone from the uh, multinational industry because I, I, the first time I went to a e-pharma, digital pharma conference around 14 years ago and I thought that this is something new and, and I realized that all the, the major multinational pharmaceutical companies had dedicated vice presidents or directors of digital health. So with that, you know, at the, at the, as a backdrop and uh, GSK playing a major role in this ecosystem. You know, I think it's great uh, that you are here and we'd like to hear more uh, from a GSK perspective. Is somebody turn it on or do I Isko on kar No, it's fine. Ji ho gaya. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, uh, my name is Suhail Mateen. Uh, I am the uh, CEO for GlaxoSmithKline Consumer Healthcare. So GSK is pharma and consumer. So I belong to the consumer side of the business, which is uh, not, I would say, innovative in terms of pill development, but in innovative in terms of concept development. So digital is something that drives our business, connectivity, consumer. So we have to be kind of thinking beyond pill. And I think that's the kind of theme we have. So I mean, uh, I've been around for a while. I've worked for pharmaceutical for 33 years. So I started my career. Even when I studied, there was no computer. I studied in NED and there was no computer. When I went to USA first time, I remember running those cards with computer which you kind of punch in and put in. But the world has evolved. So I have seen in 33 years how things have moved from kind of power center lying in experts to power center belonging to consumers and belonging to people. And so awareness and connectivity has become so important that we realize and I think that's the mantra we have in GSK now consumer the beyond pill. So the whole thinking has to go from pills to beyond pill. So beyond, is it, are we talking about 
devices? Are we talking about data? Are we talking about connectivity? I mean, from a person who, who uh, you know, touched uh, a mobile at a, at a very senior age, now wears a Fitbit. And that's something that kind of uh, drives my life. How much I am walking today? How did I sleep well? And it even tells me you have been sitting for too long, so get up and walk. So this is the kind of transformation that has taken place. And this is the transformation that we want to be part of. And this is the kind of a concept we are developing that you have to reach now, doctor, patient, uh, they're everywhere, anytime, any place. So it's not like con conventional wisdom that a clinic for a doctor or a consumer, you can only talk through TV. So I think that's where we are driving. We are driving the agenda where we could reach and give message. So it's now about awareness, it's about dialogue. Uh, and interestingly, I, I remember attending a, a, a meeting in uh, Thailand where Alibaba marketing uh, director was there and he was presenting and say, we are not in the business of retail, we are in the business of data. That's what our biggest asset is. So when you, you know, hear these things, you rea realize that the uh, world has moved on and the whole paradigm shift is taking place. And I think that's where we want to be in that journey that we want to connect with people. People are seeking information. Uh, one of the, another interesting comment, my sister is a, is a, a, a psychiatrist in England, and she says now when a patient comes, he has got so much knowledge about what's happening to him and what he has studied, that we are more like they're asking, should we use this drug or that drug, and do, am I suffering? So now it's more of an advisor role. And you know, it's more like, they are so uh, well aware and, and uh, knowledgeable, uh, the consumer, the patient, the doctor, that we have to help them in this journey. And I think that's the whole philosophy beyond the pill. And uh, you know, when we'll talk, I'll, I'll talk more about, but now it's no conventional marketing, no convention. It's all about going to the consumer, giving him the knowledge, empowering him, and making sure you give him them what he wants. So it's, it's not, you know, a doctor telling him, do this. This doesn't happen now. Great. So, <clears throat> a good rundown. Thank you. <clears throat> so, I would, I would request all my, uh, you know, audience, you have this power of the smartphone and the internet. Why don't you Google uh, Pharma 3.0 so that you uh, are more prepared for the question-answer session? Uh, we have this great panel with us, and I think it's, a, it's always a great idea that you know you use the, the the power of Google and see how things are moving. Uh, we are all, uh, I think, uh, on the same page that pharmaceutical is not only now about developing pills and selling pills. It's much beyond that, and I think this conference actually really, really helps in taking this message forward to all the stakeholders. Uh, we would, we'll start the the question answer session, and I'll take the liberty to to you know, uh, ask my panelists a few questions which I had researched. So Harun Sa, we'll uh, start with you. Uh, so there is a difference between Pharma 3.0 and Pharma 4.0. And I want uh, you to please help us to understand what is the difference and what is Pharma 4.0. Thank you, uh, Dr. Zaki. And, uh, since I didn't know about this, so I had to also Google it and <laughs> took some notes. So let me read it out, and uh, maybe then we can, you know, try to understand what is Pharma 4.0. Pharma 4.0 is known as a smart factory, which is representing a shift away from focusing on producing a fixed specification, and it also revolves around a system of real-time monitoring, simulation, and control of manufacturing process, which is basically the Internet of Things. And the concept builds on the principles of quality by design and process co analytical technology, which is PAT, and that started over a decade ago in the pharmaceutical and biotech industries. So the Pharma 4.0 world can only become a reality when we have the necessary base data platforms in, in, in place. So data plays an important role. And the machines and equipment which will be fitted with sensors that are constantly monitoring every aspect of operation as a self-aware components be part of their own condition indicating when they are likely to fail. So in, in, in nutshell, 
Pharma 4.0 will both improve efficiency and eliminate the need for human manual intervention and facilitate higher levels of quality and objective of particular importance in pharmaceutical manufacturing. So, for example, in our facility when we started in 2001 or 2002, we started with what you know, uh, one of the panelists, uh, my colleague Hamid mentioned, the building, building management system, which actually monitors you know, the, all the environmental conditions in, in, in manufacturing facility where you're producing uh, the drugs or the pills. So this Pharma 4.0 is basically a smart factory where you have all, everything is digital, the machines are talking to each other, the quality control is talking to, to, the, to the machines and giving you the best of the quality products where the human intervention is minimal. Great. Um, so, so yesterday when we had this uh, uh, master class or a workshop or a session, we had more than 100 people so we could not conduct a workshop yesterday, but it was great, it was uh, uh, wonderful. Uh, it was all about digital health and technology helping to move into the Pharma 3.0. And obviously we had a discussion of, on artificial intelligence and we gave examples. So Daniel and I, you know, we were discussing how artificial intelligence is uh, revolutionizing healthcare. And, and then the question came up, is AI going to replace radiologists? And half of the the, the participants said yes. They thought that AI will replace radiologists. The other half said no. And then we, we discussed that maybe AI is going to redefine the role of the radiologist. So my question is, and I think we can talk about it, is technology going to replace? Uh, will we have factories, and Harun saw we were discussing this the other day. In the next five years, Will we still have these factories? And what role 3D is going to play in that? So I'm going to move to my uh, next panelist. And Javed, you know, since, since you talked about AI, uh, you know, can you give us examples? I, I mentioned a few examples, but maybe some more relevant examples how AI is, is already helping the pharmaceutical industry in moving to the 3.0 patient-centric you know, space? There is a concept of uh, uh, a personalized medicine these days. Mm -hmm. Now, what they are doing, uh, they are going through the molecular diagnostics and they do the DNA, RNA based uh, genetic uh, analysis and testing. And through the gene mutation, uh, what, uh, what, what is going on these days, they will identify a particular medicine for a particular patient instead of uh, making a product which can be useful for everybody, they will identify a particularly, particular gene of that patient and can develop a product which can be very, very effective uh, uh, and, and safe for, for that particular. And this is basically is being used mainly in the case of uh, cancer treatments, in the case of cancer treatment. So this is one area where I can see that uh, artificial intelligence is playing uh, a very significant role. And second is that uh, we have seen a lot of wearables these days. Now, uh, you can, all the patients, all the normal healthy people are having these wearables that uh, their blood uh, glucose is monitored, their diabetes levels are monitored, their uh, uh, that, uh, hypertension, uh, the blood pressure, the cholesterol level, the, the, all the lifestyle can be captured in those wearables and that can be a very, very important data to determine that how this particular person is going uh, uh, to behave, how he's going to live his life, and what kind of problems he can face uh, in near future. So these can, things can be predict predicted with the data available through your, uh, th generated through your body. So these variables are getting very common and very popular. And as an example, if you see that, uh, uh, when we were talking about, like if you're, if you're reading an article about Teva, Teva CEO was saying that our competition is not with other pharmaceutical industry anymore. Our competition is with the tech companies. And as a result, uh, we have noticed that if you look at Google, if you look at Amazon, they have like more than 50 patents filed in the, in the healthcare industry. So the, the way they are working, definitely they are going to replace pills uh, with uh, more intelligent devices, artificial intelligence. And I think these are the few examples that I have in mind right now. Great, very relevant. So, uh, 
Any of you know the story of uh, Angelina Jolie? What happened with her and how she used technology and as an empowered patient what she did. So, so she's a very you know, famous actress and uh, uh, she went for the genome sequencing and found out that she carries the gene for breast cancer. And then as an empowered patient, not instructed by the physician, using technology, she went for a bilateral mastectomy and she talks about it openly. I think that's a, a brilliant example of an empowered patient who wants to control his or her, you know, uh, self and, and disease and wellness, uses technology, takes a decision, and then enjoys wellness. Uh, let's move to uh, Nusrat Munshi. And um, I, I, I had a question, because we've been talking about collaboration, and, and I also showed you that Google, or pretty much every IT company is working in healthcare. So how do you see you know, the pharmaceutical industry collaborating with these IT companies, specifically maybe you know, if you can uh, focus on Pakistan, uh, how can we work with them and partner with them? Sure, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I think we have a head start in the form of the smartphone. So, you know, we already are, uh, our healthcare practitioners and our patients uh, have the smartphone with them and with the risk of sounding judgmental, I think the, you know, they're un un inseparable uh, glued to their smartphones. So I think the, the, the depth of knowledge that the pharmaceutical companies have, now the key is to translate uh, this knowledge uh, to patient-centered solutions. And I think uh, startup IT companies and e-health companies, the, they, can, uh, they can be the missing link between uh, the pharmaceutical companies and the HCPs and the patients. Uh, I think data mining will become increasingly important as we move forward. I think the, the patient uh, would want access to his data uh, from birth to grave. I think that uh, he would want control of that data. And I think uh, startup companies, IT companies, e-health companies can play a key role in in formulating uh, these solutions. We, you know, we see these science fiction movies where we can already uh, imagine the future. Uh, that like, you know, you, 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 can, you can actually monitor your, uh, your, you can see your heart rate, someone sitting uh, thousands of kilometers away uh, will be analyzing that data and suggesting those solutions for you. So I think from uh, this transformation, from pill to performance, uh, the 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 e-health and IT startup companies can play a key role in bridging the gap between the pharmaceutical companies and uh, the millennial HCPs and the millennial patients. Thank you. So, <clears throat> uh, just a thought. Maybe as one of the outcomes of this conference, and maybe next year, inshallah, when we're able to organize the fifth uh, PPMS summit, maybe, or hopefully, uh, we are able to demonstrate that after this conference, we had five good examples of pharma IT industry uh, collaborations and some other projects which actually started from this conference. So I think that would be a great outcome of this conference, hopefully, inshallah. You please. Uh, one thing I would like to add here, because we can, uh, as a pharmaceutical industry, it is our responsibility to create awareness in, in Pakistan. You know, and we can use it using the technology, especially when we're talking about the cell phones. Now, we are the one of the few countries, I think, uh, two countries in the world, is still struggling to eradicate polio. And we have to, we are still convincing our uh, population for the use of vaccination. And we are still discussing about whether this vaccine, vaccine is halal or haram. 
I think this is a this is a time where the pharmaceutical industry can play a role to create awareness to eradicate such serious and important issues and important disease from the country. And I think technology can play a key role in that. Definitely, yeah. definitely, and that's a great uh, point. So, uh, Toki Saab, you are the CEO of a company. You know, you are the leader. You can decide. So my question is, how can Sante? you know, take the, the initiative or lead in this and so maybe if I can rephrase it, which are the low-hanging fruits for you in the digital health space through which you would probably like to start? Okay, I think this is the era of digitalization and uh, time has come for pharmaceutical companies to move towards this advancement and I think I believe that pharmaceutical Pharmaceutical companies now should think towards e-detailing. But I know this is very expensive and it involves huge resources to start with. We can, you know, look forward to have uh, mobile apps because, you know, that can lead pharmaceutical companies to move towards the era of Pharma 3. And we can, we can have smart mobile apps which can be a excellent tool of engagement between uh, health providers and the patients. For example, we can have uh, mobile apps for patients. We can create awareness regarding the disease and regarding the side effects of the, the medicine which they are using. They can connect themselves to the app and can ask as many questions about the disease as they want to do. And for example, we are you are talking about Sante, we are one of the leading uh, ophthalmology company and as many of you would know that glaucoma is the leading, one of the leading cause of blindness throughout the world and this is a disease which is not, you know, even not being looked after properly by the ophthalmologist and there is a lack of awareness. So we are in the process of, you know, having a mobile app which will, you know, give awareness to the community, to the patient, to the general public regarding the uh, disease. For example, we can create awareness that someone, you know, getting at the age of 40 should have their intraocular pressure checked. Diabetic patient, they should have, uh, after six months, they have, uh, they should go to the ophthalmologist to check their blood uh, uh, intraocular pressure. Similarly, we can disseminate the latest research, clinical trials, and update to the health providers, to the physicians through these apps so that they can keep themselves abreast with the latest, latest advancement in different therapeutic areas. We can have a drug disease specific uh, uh, patient portal as well. Plus, we can also use the technology for uh, export specific technology, there are apps which can, you know, give you information regarding the requirement of export. And I think every pharmaceutical company is now looking forward to expand their presence outside Pakistan. And by using technology, we can, you know, speed up the export processes. Plus, many companies have Salesforce effective, uh, effectiveness. And this is basically Salesforce automation. This is basically that will help. This is the combination of app and backhand system which can, you know, automate the efficiency and productivity of your field force. It can help them, you know, being more disciplined and more productive. And if you look at, in Pakistan, there are only about 60,000 doctors for the population of 200 million. By using mobile app, we can connect DHQs and THQs, and even we can train their doctors, we can provide them, you know, in, uh, disease uh, information and, uh, you know, information regarding the problems. Great. Yeah, so, I think that's a, that's a great, uh, and, and we hope that, inshallah, next year, you will be sitting here telling us about your three mobile apps uh, successfully launched, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, so you talked about cost. Uh, so yesterday we, we, we were discussing that for every one dollar spent in continuing medical education 
by the pharmaceutical industry, they get back three dollars. So it's a, it's a very good business case as well. It's not a cost, it's a very good investment in, in CME and physician engagement. And my other question to the audience, how many of you know that physicians are prescribing mobile apps? Okay, so one physician, IT guy, right. So actually physicians are, in addition to pills today, they, on their prescription, they're adding mobile apps to their patients. How many of you know that that's happening in Pakistan? Okay, great. So think about it. Okay, let's move. Uh, I would to add one more. Do thing. you please, sir? Yeah, because uh, you know that we have uh, access to international uh, clinical trials, but I think we should uh, look, the pharmaceutical companies should, you know, look into the possibility of having information system regarding the usage of their products locally. For example, they should have information system for patient and doctors to, you know, know the uh, safety and efficacy sure. of their products locally. So that will help to, you know, improve our sure. uh, system. And plus, you know, uh, I think for Pharma 3, <coughs> Uh, there is need of uh, need of the R is that we should you know create a culture within the organization. Great, I think that's a that, great point. That we should you know move towards. And we can talk about that yeah. later because we have to move forward. And and as I said, uh, my job is really difficult. I have to manage time. So thank you very much. And I think culture that's a we we need to have a, a session on that. So uh, Hamid Saab, you know, <coughs> I would want you to uh, you know share with us. You were in the workshop yesterday with us. How would your company and how would you uh, engage with physicians as a partner and what technology do you think you can utilize? Actually, uh, uh, the most important thing is the patient empowerment. The patient empowerment means that you give more control of their lives of the patients and build their capacity to understand, to prioritize what is more important for their lives and for their health. In this way, the first thing is the education. The second thing is the availability of the retrievable information in a simple format. Mm -hmm. This could be an app, this could be a blog on the internet, this could be some device. So when patient is more empowered and more educated, the compliance is better and then it can build a more sustainable health care both for the organization and for the patient. So we as a company, I believe, should work with the uh, IT companies, IT experts to build the ways how we can empower patient for knowing him what, what are the possibilities for him in his disease condition and what are the options and how he can collaborate with the health provider and with the companies to improve their lives. Great. Uh, so, Ilsab, you mentioned that you work in the, you know, consumer side. So, so maybe you can, you know, uh, shed some light. And I was thinking that, how do you think you can utilize social media, Internet of Things, these devices, you know, some of the devices I showed, uh, for data-driven decisions? in uh, improving health outcomes? I think that's a relevant question for you. Uh, yeah, definitely. I think a couple of things that uh, are challenges for us. I mean, for when we say consumer healthcare, we are talking to doctors and we are talking to consumer and patient. Now with doctor, phase two has, has become a nightmare. We know 10 medical reps sitting there and a doctor saying one minute and say your message. And when you go to consumer, conventional TV doesn't work because when you, now in your home, people used to think that when an ad comes, you can put ad in different channel and people skip channel and you, they'll still see an ad. When you see in your home, an ad comes, your wife is on a mobile, you are on a mobile, your child is on a mobile. So clearly you understand that, uh, and even for a doctor, the way he, on his own time is interacting with digital. So I think that's a media that has now become very, very important to connect with. So digital is now the way to go. So the way we are kind of thinking and GSK evolving is to create those platforms from which we can connect to. So search is a very important medium that if you create those platforms where consumer can come and search, 
where patients are talking to each, each other or where people are seeking knowledge and information. Now, it's a two-way street. When people are seeking knowledge, you are also learning about your consumer and your patient and what he wants and what he is looking for. And that creates data. And that's where we want to use that data. And, you know, one of the things that GSK is looking at globally is creating something like Alexa for, for patient, where patient and consumer can come and we give them something and they give us data. They give us information what they are looking for, what is happening, and that data really help us create solutions. And that solutions will help us how to reach them, what kind of solution we can offer. Uh, and it's not about uh, cure, it's also about prevention. So all this journey, data has become a king. Data is something, and one of the things Javed sir mentioned is clearly our competition is not pharmaceutical company. Our competition is actually Google, it's Amazon. And these people have gone beyond where they have connected to consumer on a healthcare platform and using that data to win. And now companies like GSK Consumer, because we are now the biggest uh, consumer healthcare company in the world, we believe that we need to be on that platform. We create, have to create this, those platforms and compete with these unconventional healthcare players. And that's where we are uh, working on a lot of technology, developing that platform that we can connect with our consumer and search is one of them. Locally, you know, uh, people may not think we spend a lot, but we realize that how important it is to have that connection. And a significant portion of our budget goes on digital. So we spend about 300 million in Pakistan on digital connections. So that's the way future is going. And we are in, in, in a country where still it's evolution. But digital is something, you know, we used to say 15, 20 years, something that will come in West will come to Pakistan in 10, 15 years. That's how we used to think technology will evolve. Today, what will come in Europe and Europe, Pakistan will be there in a one or two years' time. So I think we have to move fast and we have to create those platforms. Great. Uh, thank you very much. So, <clears throat> you know, as you can see that I'm getting messages and we need to now uh, go to the end. So I've, I've asked them to allow us to take two questions. Now, my request is, please be very specific, a question in... 20 seconds. Only two questions. Sir, uh, please can you stand up? Uh, till the mic comes, you can, you know, shoot your question. Please. My name is Hashim. I'm a medical journalist and, a, and I also own a technical company. So we provide technology and into applications. My question is that when serialization was introduced, the aim was patient safety. Mm -hmm. The pharma industry was super resistant to this. And uh, today, like, we have an application. We are working with some of uh, our clients are here. But what I feel is that everybody is very price sensitive, whereas we have the antiquary application, we have the patient safety application, and the only one where patient can actually verify at the time of purchase. So, Why this result? Who do you want to ask? Well, especially Javed Saab and uh, okay. any other. Who will take this quickly? Javed Saab will take it? Harun Saab will take it. Great. Okay, uh, and can you prepare for the second question, please? Do, sir, do, I'm so sorry. Uh, at the, there is a resistance, I, I admit. And the resistance is because of many factors. Uh, one of the large, ma major reason is that the ecosystem is not there. So the company resisting thing, what's the use of having this when the patient is not getting any benefit? So nevertheless, the industry is getting ready. And uh, any pharma industry, let me assure you, is working for the patient benefit. So we can, I think the time is limited. Uh, okay, you want to add? Add something in this. हाँ मेरा ख्याल है कि इसको हम ऑफ कर लेंगे क्योंकि क्वेश्चन भी ज़्यादा थे और हमें सिर्फ दो अलाउड हैं। I'm so sorry, so only the second question. I'm Akram Ji, representing CCL Pharmaceutical as a commercial director. We also in the market we also work as competitor. Now we are sitting as a friend. We are talking about technologies. Technologies needs investments, and sometimes commercially they don't seem viable in one year span. So can industry collaborate in certain areas like in diabetes, 
in cardiometabolics or in other areas to develop some apps we are talking from yesterday uh, for the patients which, which will be available for the patient. So patient, we will not again will be fighting that which application the patient should download. Will it be a Farmiva application or will it be a GETS application or it will be a CCL application? So can we collaborate to build some common platforms for the patients? Uh, sure, we got that. Thank you. Please. I think, I think it's, a, it's a brilliant idea and we should do that. And then we should do that at a, a PPMA level also, uh, where all the pharmaceutical companies can work together to develop a platform that can be beneficial for the patient. And second is, pharmaceutical companies are contributing 1% of the pre-tax profit as a central research fund to DRAP. And I think these, this kind of fund, which is a big fund with DRAP, must be utilized for, for the activities that you are suggesting, and we can do much more than that. Not only the awareness, but much more than can be done using the CRF funds which are lying with DRAP. Yeah. I think it's a good idea and we should do that at, at least at the PPMA platform. Yeah. Great. So uh, again, I'm so sorry. Uh, log, uh, we can conversation. So I would now request our chair to summarize this, uh, this brilliant uh, interactive conversation and uh, close the session. Sarfasa, please. Well, I, I'd like to thank the, the panel. I think so because of shortage of time, I would like to just summarize very quickly. So I heard three different parts, okay? Uh, digital uh, for business augmentation is the story of day before yesterday, long gone, okay? Whether you have applied it or not, okay, I think that's not what we're talking about today. Uh, yesterday's story is how we are interacting with uh, patients, uh, converting information into knowledge, but I think we have to talk about what is coming tomorrow. Everything we have talked about today is, the, is yesterday's story, okay? Because that's what we're talking about. Okay? Now, Masaddeq said, and I said yesterday, it's a non-linear curve, okay? So let's, let's reflect briefly on what may be happening in the future also. First of all, I always had an issue with the word artificial intelligence. It's not artificial, okay? The intelligence is real, okay? It's a machine intelligence, okay? But mostly I would be overruled, okay? So I will take it back, okay? I think what's happening is that there is a call uh, the machine intelligence. Uh, what happens uh, back in 70s when the big blue um, uh, defeated the chess game, all the programming was done in the computer and computer played the chess, except it was able to uh, calculate, so that was data-driven. Now what we're looking for is an algorithm-driven, where uh, this happened about two months ago, uh, just like in a chess, you have an eight by eight, there's a Chinese game that's a 50 by 50, and the Google uh, uh, computer won it, and the Chinese were so embarrassed, okay, they would not even publish the story, okay? So what they did was there was no, uh, uh, there was no programming, zero. All there was, uh, the rules of the games were in there, and the computer wrote its own algorithm. So it's called machine learning, and that, I think, is going to happen. Uh, the first uh, in, is going to impact uh, physicians and healthcare. Radiologists, in my opinion, will be out of job soon. They just did a study where uh, a, a machine learn uh, system did better than uh, but about 12 radiologists are reading the x-rays, okay. I think the remote uh, healthcare is going to be very common now that we will have sensors. So how is the industry going to interact with physicians tomorrow? Okay. You may not even have to go there anymore. But I think there will be an uh, uh, integration of patients, but they have knowledge, what you can give to them. And more important, I think the medical practice will change significantly and the industry will then have to adopt it. How do we uh, deal with them? For wrapping it up, uh, 